This album is, uh, it says a lot and it means a lot. Morgan Wallen dropped his highly anticipated 36 track studio album, One Thing at a Time, and it's quickly become a fan favorite and it's breaking Spotify records, Billboard records, and if there's one thing Morgan can say is that he's feeling pretty blessed. I consider myself blessed for sure. Um, you know, I always kind of thought that I was going to have to scrap around and live paycheck to paycheck. I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. I had no clue. Uh, music just... Obviously that's not the case anymore. And I'm able to not only take care of myself, I'm able to take care of a lot of people and you know, especially my family. So yeah, it's a, it's a big time blessing. Morgan also talked about how writing just really allows him to express himself. I, I don't think that I'm overly, my thoughts aren't overly on display to people. I don't think just best, you know, just off of my words. I don't necessarily speak my feelings a lot. Yeah, definitely writing and singing is my is damn near the only way I can get my feelings out. Now this album is packed. 36 songs, amazing writers. Ernest wrote on 11 of them, including Cowgirls, which he's featured on. He also has two other songs with features with Hardy and Eric Church. And he talks about how Eric Church has become a big influence on him. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of country music. I'm a country music singer. I grew up listening to country music. Some of my biggest influences are Keith Whitley and Eric Church. I always had country music was more of a passive thing. You know, I'm like, I'm from the country, but I never really got, I was not a huge, like super fan of anyone until I heard Eric Church. And I just heard the way he wrote songs and the way that he was so colorful. You know, I've used this example before, but talk about mustard on his fries and just, you know, random things like that. And it just kind of let me know that you can say whatever you want. Yeah, Eric Church has, has become a big part of my life. You know, we don't talk every day, but we talk, you know, weekly. It's, it's uh, I, I, you know, I respect him so much and look up to him so much. And I now have access to his knowledge and, you know, just things that he's been through. And, you know, mostly we just have a great friendship. It's, a, it's um, we joke around, we laugh, just like, you know, most friends do. But I also have, you know, I have him as a, someone who is looking out for me in a way, as someone who's been through this before. And uh, yeah, super grateful for that. And another big name on the album was Miranda Lambert. She co-wrote Thought You Should Know with Morgan and Nicole Gallion and that song's already gone number one, and Morgan talks a bit about that too. Yeah, Miranda is, uh, you know, everybody knows how badass she is, and that's not just that's not just a front. She is a incredibly talented musician, incredibly talented uh, writer as well. Um, I actually wasn't even supposed to write with her that day. I was just it was just going to be me and Nicole Galleon. Thought you should know is you know my song to to my mom. I I, uh, I had an idea of writing her this song for a while. Ended up writing it and it's ended up being a, a hit. You know, it's my most recent number one and got to have her in the video, got to, you know, really make her a, a huge part of, of this song, not just lyrically, but just, you know, visually as well. So my mom's a, a big hit back home because of it. And it's, uh, it's, it's always gonna be special for me and her. I wanted to write with a woman for this specific song just because it was for my mom and I wanted a, a woman's um, perspective a mother's perspective in particular. Nicole called me and was like, hey, do you care if Miranda comes and writes? I'm like, no, <laughs> go ahead. So she did and we wrote that song. I already had the verse and chorus of that song. So they, you know, they helped me switch a couple things that they thought could be better. And then we wrote the second verse and finished the song out. So that happened pretty fast. And then we wrote three or four more songs the rest of the day and just hung out and had a, had a good time. So um, we haven't wrote since, but We've, we've talked about it and I'm sure we will at some point, but I'm a huge fan of Miranda. I was before I even moved to this town, so it's cool for me to get to do things like that. The song Outlook also features backing vocals by his sister Ashlyn, which was pretty important to him too. My sister Ashlyn, she's singing on Outlook with me. So we, uh, and I wanted my, my baby sister, Michaela, to be on, on the record as well, but she uh, she had just given birth and I was real last minute about all my features anyway. So I'm lucky I got anybody on the record if I'm being honest. But um, yeah, Ashlyn, me, her and Michaela, we grew up singing harmonies in church. And, you know, my mom was real, real musical with us growing up, you know, whether like it was learning the 50 states or learning whatever it was always something to do with song you know like everything was was music so i kind of had no choice in that in that matter but um thankfully and yeah ashlyn i've always loved her voice i've always wanted to do this with her but i've always kind of been in a hurry and it just never happened and 
Um, that almost happened this time too, but luckily she came in here actually in this in the studio and sang, and that was her first experience, you know, singing behind a mic like that, being recorded. So it was cool for me to be in here and, and seeing her be a part of that. So, man, the song, you know, is is um, it's spiritual, and I think, you know, just with the way that we learn to sing, being in a, you know in a spiritual you know realm of of things, we uh, it's, this song just made sense for me and her to sing. Morgan also touches on Born With a Beer In My Hand and Dying Man. Those are the first and last tracks of the album and two of his favorites. Born With a Beer In My Hand is, um, you know, just about being born into a family. None of us can, none of us can help what family we're born into, you know. Um, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of bad, there's a lot of indifference, just everything. You know, everybody has uh, a version of a, a family that's a little bit messed up. I was lucky with a, you know, with a really good family, but at the same time, you know, there was negatives. Um, I think it speaks to that, and I don't keep a journal, but if I did, at any given day, this could be found on, on one of the pages. Dying Man is, you know, if I'm being completely honest, there's been uh, more than a handful of times where I probably should have died, and I, I, for whatever reason, it didn't, that never really bothered me, but then, you know, I, my son was born, and I felt like the idea of dying didn't seem so okay anymore. So this song is, you know, dedicated to him. And the song we're talking about a, a woman, but to me, it's it's really about my son. Those two titles, "Born with a Beer in My Hand" and "Dying Man," just seemed appropriate where we put them. And yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of of uh, representation of of the lows and the highs and the everything in between and in the middle of that. So yeah, I mean, anytime you you have 36 songs, it's kind of hard to completely tell a story, you know. Um, more more of a sonically, um, that that's how, how that's how we put the album together sonically, more so than storytelling wise. So we you know we have. 20 something country songs that I say, you know, are more traditional country. And then we have nine songs that are beat songs that are really, you know, influenced by hip hop. And we have five or six that are what we call dirt rock. And um, that's more of my alternative leaning style. But we, you know, we'd pick two country and then we'd pick a, a beat song. And we'd do two, two more country and then we'd pick a, a dirt rock song, two more country and so on. And then the track list kind of just worked itself out that way. So I wanted to make sure that the, the sonic journey of the album was more important than, than the storytelling to me. Dirt Rock is the alternative side of my music, but, you know, with us being country, it's dirt road, you know, dirt road rock. Also, me and my friends call a lot of things that we like dirt, so it's like a, uh, a double meaning for, for us, I guess. Now, this album is definitely a lot more personal to Morgan, even with the album cover itself. Morgan talks about how they photographed the cover of the album at his great grandmother's house. My album cover is at my mamma Boots' house. She's actually my great grandmother. Uh, she lived to be 91 years old, so she was uh, a big part of my life all the way up until my early adult years. Uh, but she helped raise me. She it would at most of the time it was me and my sisters and then my my cousins. There would be you know eight or nine kids over there at her house at, at most times, at least when we were all there together. Uh, so we we had a bunch of memories there. She uh, she just had a huge impact on my life. You know, she she let me drive when I was seven years old. She she gave me a cigarette when I was seven years old because I wanted one so bad. I never had one again until I was you know 15 or so. Um, but she uh, you know I just remember things like that obviously. And she uh, she was one of a kind. And I wanted to. I also found out that they're going to be doing renovations on her house, so we didn't want to let that happen before I got a, a picture in the original spot. So I just wanted to, you know, pay respect and, and, and show my love for her, and this album just seemed like the perfect time to do it. This is really the first album he made as a dad. His son Indigo is two years old, and he talks about what it was like having him in the studio and just what it's like making an album as a dad. Making an album as, as a dad is is a... It's a little bit more challenging just time wise, you know, but luckily I got to have him come in here and, and hang out with me quite a bit um, in this room here. And he, uh, you know, my producer usually is right here and mixing and, you know, getting vocal takes and all that. But Indy, Indy took over a lot when he came in here pressing buttons and luckily he didn't mess nothing up too bad. But he, uh, you know, maybe you never know, maybe he'll he'll be a producer one day, but 
he uh, he seemed to enjoy it quite a bit. I know we all enjoyed having him in here. Just a you know fresh energy and and uh, just a good time. And uh, I know it's something I'll never forget. And I don't know if he'll remember it or not, but I'll be sure to show him all the videos and, and pictures we took. Morgan surprises fans in Nashville with a pop-up concert at Bridgestone Arena, which sold out in a matter of hours. But he talks about how he loves being on the road and how important his fans are to him. Being on the road for me is fun. Uh, luckily, because we're out there so much, I, I really enjoy it. You know, you you get uh, you get close with these people out there. You know, they become your family. You become a team. And for me, I love that because I've always been a part of a team. You know, from the time I was four years old, I started playing ball. And, and I've just, that's all I've ever known. And I, I love that part. But these people, I mean, you know, you, especially the core group of people. I mean, you really, really get close to them. They they feel like family. I mean, you know, you are family. I mean, anytime you spend that much time with someone, um, you're either going to become family or they're going to leave because you spend that much time with each other. You know, you either work out or you either become family or you get, you know, you're fired. So um, luckily, I haven't had to do that a lot. I've just had a lot of a lot of good people come in. And I'm I'm super grateful for for the people. Obviously, I love playing shows. For me, it's 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 hard to say which one I like more. If I like recording or writing or playing shows, but it's it's really hard to to beat, you know, going out um, to a, a a show and you look over here and there's a five year old kid, and then you look over here and there's a 75 year old, you know, grandparent. So, I, I mean, I don't really know too many places where where people are just so equal and, and united and, and so on the same page as that, you know, maybe church, but uh, music just has such a power to, to bring so many different groups of people together and so many ages and just a wide range of people. So I love seeing that as well. Now, Morgan Wallen was a baseball player growing up as well as a musician. So with the Morgan Wallen Foundation, he really wanted to find a way to give back in a way that was really connected to him. Baseball was my first love I, you know i think that's the best way i can describe it and once i got old enough to kind of understand the the teamwork i realized how much of a being on a team is such an unselfish thing you know because in baseball you can i mean you're not going to be successful every at bat sometimes you'll make an error you know but like if i'm hitting and i strike out i the next guy i, I don't want him to strike out i want him i want him to hit a home run you know um, because that makes the team better. That makes us all win. So I think we all, you know, we all strike out in life plenty of times. But when you, you know, you got a team around you, the next guy, he can hit a home run. And it'll, everybody will forget about the strikeout you just had. So I think that's why baseball meant so much to me. And that's why it means so much as, you know, being on the road. I think it's similar in that aspect. But yeah, you know, I'm, my baseball coach, he always told me pressure is a privilege. And that's one of the things that stuck with me from, from day one. Um, I understood it then pretty good, but I think I understand it, you know, a little bit more now what exactly he meant. Just to have these opportunities where pressure, you know, goes hand in hand with them is a blessing to, to be able to be in that position. And um, I, I really look forward to, to that kind of pressure. And, you know, I think I learned that a lot from, from baseball and from my coaches. Morgan Wallen Foundation is is geared towards kids. You know, growing up for me, I was exposed to to sports and I was exposed to music. And I think that those two things really played a huge part in in making me who I am. And I know that every kid isn't exposed to to that. Every kid is not, you know, they may be exposed to a version of it or you know, certain parts of it, but my foundation goal is to try to make sure that they're exposed to, to the right version or the best version of those two things. And um, yeah, we're, we're doing, you know, it's a new, new project that we've got going, but we're, uh, we're trying, you know, every, every way we can to make those things happen, whether it's, you know, building a baseball field or giving somebody a scoreboard or somebody doesn't have a music program in their, in their county or things like that. We're, we're working towards making those things happen. And we also like to, you know, help folks in need, not just kids. This is a, an extra part of this, but, you know, whether it's somebody had a flood or a hurricane or, or whatever, or somebody's hungry, we also do things like that. But, you know, our main focus is, is kids and sports and music. 
right now this album seems like it's on the path to break just about every streaming record there is. And if he can stay out of trouble, he'll probably win a whole lot of awards. We're rooting for you, Morgan. We love the album. So in the comments, let us know what your favorite song is. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. And stay tuned for all things The Nash News.